What's up everybody? So today in this video I'm going to be showing you the one table that every Airtable database should have. Now this is going to greatly improve any editing, any uh, error handling, any. it's really just going to improve your life using Airtable. Uh, I found it to improve many of my clients' life. Uh, so if you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS and what we do is we have business owners probably just like you. We have to optimize your information system, so in stuff like Airtable for a CRM, for asset management, for reporting, uh, Asana for project management, Slack for communication. So if you're interested in any services, you can click the link down in the description and request a consultation from me or someone on my team. Without further ado, we'll get right into the video now. So as you can see, we are in an Airtable database right here. This is a sales CRM and this, this uh, database, for whatever reason, often comes up on the channel. So what you wanna do, and I'm not going to build out this table with every single record that I would add in here, because that's really going to be dynamic based on your use case. But what I like to do for myself, as well as for all of my client tables, is I like to come down here to the end, and I add a table right here at the end. Now you can see they just added some, some more stuff down here, but what I would do is I would create an empty table right here. So I'll just create this empty table and what you're gonna call this is resources. So this table right here at the end, this is going to be a guide. This is, this is you could have as your FAQs in here for the base, um, but this is also going to be very helpful for admin tasks. So if you're an admin on the database, if you're an admin for your company and you manage a lot of these systems, then what I would add down here is this resources base. Now in this base, I'm going to be creating a few different fields out that I usually keep in here, uh, but you can create fields out depending on your use case. So this first field right here, this is usually, it should be like a unique identifier. It doesn't matter as much for this base because it's just for reference, but this should be just a short title right here. So just, I think we can probably keep it with name. Uh, but like short title or some, something really quick to explain it. And what you're going to be keeping in here is if you have an idea for like a rainy day to optimize this database, if you want to like add some automations to it, then you can add those in here. And this is how you're going to build it out. So like in here, I would include the name. So maybe the name of the automation. And then I would include a long text field right here. And so this one for me is usually trigger or notes. So if it's not uh, automation, then I would include the notes there. Um, and then here, I would add another field. And this would be actions. Because sometimes you might only have one actions action. Um, as well as in here, I often put like uh, just additional notes or like idea for improvement if it's already been implemented. So now what I would go and do is I would add another field right here and I would make this a status. So this would be like a status field right here, a single select. And what I would include in here is because you're going to be keeping track of a lot of automations in here. So for whether it's a Zapier automation or an Airtable automation, that's what you're going to be tracking. So in here, I like to keep uh, not started in process done on, done off. So I like to create that field and then add another field right here and make that another single select and this is gonna be type. So sometimes I also, cause you can write some pretty complex Airtable formulas in here. So what I like to do is I like to add a few different types of things. So this could be an Airtable formula. This could be a Airtable automation as well as a Zapier automation. Another just general, I like to keep general in there in case like you have an idea for improvement or just like any miscellaneous stuff that you want to throw in here, I like to create that. So now what I would go do is I would go to Zapier and I would go to these Airtable automations just within this space and I would come up here and find the name of these. So I've done a ton of tutorials on all these automations. But I would basically just say Airtable to Slack, so AT to Slack for this one right here. 
And then I would come in here and I would put the trigger as well as just any helpful notes about that trigger. So the current conditions that that's running on. So we could say uh, like when a opportunity is in qualification. So you would type that out in here. I'm not going to type all that out in here for this video because this is just explainer on what this table is. But you would keep going through that and then you would include your action one and action two in this idea for improvement or actions one. And then you would, if it's on, then you pick on. If it's off, then I would include off. Uh, and then obviously that one's an Airtable automation. So as you build this out, this will be a great resource hub for you in all of your Airtable databases. I like to include this in here, especially as building client databases out because these are all no code solutions. Now the formulas, some consider those code, uh, but those are pretty, they're pretty straightforward. They're also used in Excel. I would consider that pretty much no code. Um, so these are, this kind of a table is gonna be very helpful if it's you checking out to see maybe troubleshoot and automation not running or someone on your team trying to troubleshoot and automation not running or if there's suddenly an error on a uh, formula. Now, another thing in here that I, I often use in this one is totally optional for anyone watching this is I like to include a link. So this could be a link to a resource or a link to a Loom video. So if it's like a link to a web page, you can include that in there. But a lot of times I'll record a link to a Loom video explaining how a specific automation works. So I would include that in that URL field. And then as you build this out, your efficiency when anything happens it is just gonna go through the roof. Um, and it's just gonna help you, you're gonna have a lot more peace of mind knowing that all of your information is tracked and reported in here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want like an introduction to, for example, Airtable automations, then you can click this video on the end screen right here and I'll go through a full dive on going from triggers to actions, turning it on and making your workflows optimized and automated. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and without further ado, I'll see you in that next one. Just go click the video in the middle of the screen right here in the end screen and I'll see you there.